time and fabrication. We are going to continue from here. So, thank you. Uh, step of fabrication of ceramic is, uh, as you all know, the ceramic is being supplied to us in a powder form. So this has, uh, as we have told in classification, ceramic powder has been, uh, and, uh, ceramic powders have been given to us in various shades. So according to that shade, you can select them and you have to mix with the distilled water and a special liquid. I think this has been taken for you with Johara man. So I'm going on. So you have one called various method of fabricating ceramics. You have a condensing and a sintering method, a pressure molding or a sintering method. You have castable ceramic. You have split casting and milling of mechanic and digit, which is the latest technology called CAD CAM, which is computer-aided designing and computer-aided milling. So this is how it goes on and however, after fabrication of conventional porcelain, basic uh, following steps are condensation, sintering, glazing and cooling. Okay. So these are, the, these are the machine we are using uh, for seeing these are called the ceramic furnace. We have it in our lab. So this is all the ceramic furnace, uh, the house it wrote. Each ceramic furnace has the individual program which is being pre-programmed. All the machine has their program which has been already programmed by the manufacturers. So this is a uh, Daiko, castable type of uh, ceramic. This is what is the latest technique where you do a CAD CAM, where uh, you will be doing um, a computer aided. This is where the milling takes place. Uh, after that, a special milling inside, inside, inside this chamber. This is how it looks. Your ingot, ceramic ingot is being kept and a bird will come and will uh, mill it. So this is the CAD the CAM outside where you, where you, scan the impression and this is being done in the uh, computer the pro designing is done about a tooth in the in the computer and which is then feeded into the milling part so these are the various instruments which are being used to do a ceramic so you have a fine blade you have you can see the tip of the blade that is very fine so these are called the fine blade spatula or the carving point and you have a brush, uh, a brush which is specifically for ceramic. Okay, so these are being done specifically for done now, for specifically done. So now we have various uh, brush, we have various thickness of brushes where we can be using them. So this is the perfect kit. What you can see here is you. What you can see here is a perfect kit uh, where you have the blades, uh, a spatula, the condenser, and you have see the various size of the brushes which are available for us. So this is how a ceramic uh, uh, kit will be here. This is a company where a company called Vita, which we are using. So you have various uh, powders. These are what you see on the right hand side top. You have various powders of the ceramic which is being used. So uh, these are the various shades and where you can mix and match and other things. So how does we do the first thing is we first use uh, powders. The powders is dispensed on a glass slab using a nylon spatula. Okay, so that has been the nylon spatula. We have a rod, we have a rod which will divide. We need to divide the powder equally and then we mix it with the, we mix it with the liquid to make a creamy mix like this. I hope you all understood. And then the second half would be the condensation, the process of packing the particles together and removing the liquid binder, which is known as the condensation. So what are the different methods? You have a vibration method, you have a spatulation method, you have a dry brush technique and a whipping method. In a vibration method where you add it on the powder and you tap the 
ceramic so there will be a little vibration and you have the liquid coming over the surface so you have to hold it in a tweezer you will hold it in a tweezer and you keep tapping it once you add the ceramic so the excess liquid can be removed with a tissue paper so it, what will happen when you keep the tissue paper over the thing the tissue paper blocks or it removes the excess liquid so how is this done you have a binder which helps to hold the particle together in a porcelain the distilled water commonly we use a distilled water which is used to mix this uh, powder of ceramics okay or else we have special liquid which is called the glycol but glycol the purpose of a glycol is a little viscous so it holds the material together the primary objective is to hold the ceramic together okay you have what is called a ceramosonic condenser so the name itself says sonic sonic means vibration with a small uh, frequency of vibration which vibrate the ceramic so what will happen when it keep vibration the ceramic condenses the ceramic condenses and the liquid comes out this is a uh, latest technique uh, machine which is called a ceramo condenser so this is how in process i hope everything is being given in the picture so let's see the first picture so what we do is we take ceramic we put it on the die and then again add ceramic like this and then what we do we try to condense it we condense it four methods of condensing the vibration the dry brushing technique the whipping technique and then we'll remove the excess of liquid and slowly we give the morphology of a tooth you can see here we are giving the morphology of the tooth again adding so can you see as you all studied in the first year the mammillons in the center incisors you can add that and get it uh, get the morphology of a tooth once that is done okay when you have done that you have got the morphology of the tooth and other things then you put it in the furnace to do the ceramic baking or the ceramic firing this is very important this is a two mark question or a five mark question for you guys sintering or firing of ceramic a sintering of ceramic is defined as a process of heating the particle the closely packed particle uh, uh, to achieve a interparticular bonding okay so to make it in a very simple words you can say sintering is defined as heating or firing the packed porcelain at a very high temperature thereby the molecules get closer and you have a interlocking bond i repeat sintering is a heating process of a closely packed ceramic at a very high temperature so that the interatomic bond increases i give some time for you to copy if you want to cap it down it is defined as a process of heating closely packed particles to achieve the interparticular bonding and to decrease the surface area and increase the density of the structure in a simple words heating of the closely packed ceramic at a very high temperature to increase the bond strength so what happens doing firing okay so these are the changes what will happen what will happen when you first start heating whenever you heat anything there is loss of water the water comes from the uh, component which is used to mix the ceramic powder so there is a loss of water so what happens the as you keep heating as you know we have already taken the classification of ceramic under the classification under the heading of firing temperature ceramic is being classified according to the firing temperature as high fusing ceramic medium fusing ceramic 
low fusing ceramic ultra low fusing ceramic so each one has a firing temperature so when you fire it what happen at a low fusing temperature you have about 32 to 37 percentage of it to undergo shrinkage why it will undergo shrinkage because when you heat the ceramic when you heat the ceramic when you heat the ceramic the water content comes out once the water content comes out there is a closely packed molecules as we saw the previous slide what is sintering when you heat it at high temperature the water goes out and there is a bonding of an interatomic bond increases so what happens when the loss of water happens is 32 to 37 percentage of a low fusing Uh, in the low fusing ceramic and 28 to 35 percentage of shrinkage occurs in a high fusing okay so once the shrinkage has happened and a firing is over you need to check whether the morphology is the same if not you add on you again add the ceramic particles on it fire it and finish it and finally we do what is called the glazing as i have already told you what is glazing doing the comp Components of ceramic. When I took the class on components of ceramic, I already told you what is glazing. Glazing is nothing but polishing of the ceramic. We do the polishing. It can be a add-on ceramic or a self-glazed ceramic. So this is a. Uh, this is what I'm giving you a picturized idea of how it looks before firing. So before firing, if you see, these are the ceramic particles, and in between, what you see here is the water. I repeat, before firing of the ceramic, the ceramic particles will be looking like this. In between the ceramic passing, whatever you can see as a white space. Okay, these are water content. But once you heat, the water contents comes out. So this is how you see after firing. After firing, how it be? This is how the ceramic. You don't have any water content in between the ceramic molecules. So what happens? It it becomes tightly bond. Interatomic bond increases. The strength of ceramic increases. Okay, so. Oh. This fuses and it forms what is called a prismatic structure. Okay, I again repeat: before firing, you can see this ceramic molecules. In between the ceramic molecules, you can see the water content. The white space are called the water content. Okay, so once you heat it, the water content gets exposed, and what you see here after firing is the component which are closely packed. They are closely packed. So what happens? The strength increases. The water content comes out. So what we do after heating, you can see a prismatic structure. What you form a prismatic structure. I'm sure you all are with me. So different ways you have different ways of firing. You have a air vacuum firing, you have a vacuum firing, and you have diffusible gas like helium, hydrogen, or steam firing. Generally, what we do is we were using air firing previously, uh, and now we use vacuum firing because in air firing, uh, as you know, the components of air like oxygen and other content may. Have disadvantage, or they may get into the molecule. So we don't use air firing now. We use only vacuum firing. Okay. So vacuum firing is where uh, is done totally. Uh, the vacuum is sucked out of the machine, and you fire it. So advantages. You have a very tight bonding structure. Okay. Certain ceramic when uh, they uh, they use helium or hydrogen gas to uh, do the firing. Uh, but what we use in uh, india is only a vacuum fire so you can see how exactly everything goes on this is a ceramic machine okay so this will be all the ceramic powders and other things according to the company and it is mandatory it is important whichever company of machine you are using that particular company of powder you have to use if you don't use you want to change then you need to change the program of the machine okay this is what you have to do 
Next. So what uh, stages? So what happens at one month stage? You have certain uh, characters of the. You have uh, when you use a characterless feature gain low bismic. These these the low bismic, the medium bismic and high bismic are stages of firing. Okay, when you do the first firing, it is called the. Uh, it's called a low bismic stage. Okay, then the second firing is called the medium bismic stage, and the third firing is called the high stage. So when you see what happens is when you do stage by stage, you can see how the grains here the grain gets softened, and uh, there is a coalescence at the contact point. Okay, this increases as we go towards the high bismic stage. already i have told you what is glazing a, a, a procedure of a smooth shiny shiny layer which is seen on the ceramic is called glazing why do you do glazing it decreases it decreases the crack propagation and avoid the surface details okay so you have two types of glazing as i took class on the composition you have a add on glaze on a self self glaze okay add on glaze is nothing but you add a low fusing transparent glass material preferably a glycol or something and then you fire it so that's how it becomes glaze and this forms a layer okay cooling very important after heating the ceramic you can't do an upward cooling you have to wait you have to cool it as stage wise you cannot cool it down straight okay uh, as, as you know, it is a poor conductor of heat and brittle in nature. The process must be carried out very slowly. Okay, so you don't take it immediately. You don't remove the ceramic after heating right from the furnace. You keep it in the furnace, allow it to come slow, 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 slow down, slow down. Rapid cooling. If you do a rapid cooling and a sudden change in temperature. Okay, the porcelain will lead to a crack. Okay, so it's and the loss of strength because of development of tensile stress. I repeat, cooling of ceramic has to be done gradually. You cannot do a abrupt cooling. You have to cool it down as in the stage ways. If you do a rapid cooling, what happens? If you do a rapid cooling, you will have you will result in what is called the cracking of ceramic or fracture, cracking or fracture of the glass. Okay, this will lead to loss of strength. So coming into the uh, properties properties of porcelain. You all know why we use porcelain. It's because of the aesthetic qualities. It has a very good uh, color stability. You can match it with any color of the teeth, dark, white, yellowish, grayish. So it has a good aesthetic property. That's why, that's why uh, ceramic has been, uh, it's gained its importance in the trend teeth. Okay. It has a very high hardness. Its strength is very Good. Okay. So hardness. Then you have its compressive. Its compressive strength is very high. Okay. It has a very good chemical durability, which means it does not react with saliva or with any acids. Or you you may take uh, you may take uh, soft drinks. You may take coffee. So in, each one has different pH. Okay, so you have uh, acidic pH, you have an alkaline pH, but nothing will be affected, affects the ceramic, and it is excellent biocompatible. Okay, it can it has an excellent biocompatible property. It is brittle. Okay, it is quite brittle because ceramic. You all have used your ceramic cups in your house. It is br uh, brittle. It can. It has. At one, it has uh, its limit of its compressive stress. Stress beyond that, it will fracture. 
low tensile strength very very important ceramic has a very low tensile strength what is a tensile strength a strength which is acting away from the center point is called that tensile it has a very good compressive strength but a very low tensile strength so i've given you it i certify uh, newtons per meter square okay elastic modulus is great it has around 100 to power of 6 psi okay uh, linear coefficient of thermal expansion is also great for, for ceramic that's why it's been used it has a very low thermal conductivity that means it does not conduct heat or cold when you put a ceramic cap you will not have any sensitivity that's the very important uh, and then its specific gravity is around 2.2 to 2.3 linear shrinkage for high fusing ceramic we have 11.9 and a low fusing ceramic we have around 14 percentage refractive index very important refractive index uh, is 1.52 to 1.54 almost to your similar to your uh, enamel uh, prism is where you have one so this will be around 1.5 to 1.54 Okay, this is not much important. On cooling furnace temperature, outside the porcelain will cool more rapidly. So the porcelain has a very low thermal conductivity. So you have to do the cooling very slowly. This is what it says again. So cooling of ceramic has to be done very slowly, stepwise. Suppose if you do a, if suppose you do a, rapid cooling when you do what happen they will be an internal surface cracks so you can see in the picture please look at the picture when you do a rapid cooling you will have you will have internal surface cracks it will go from inside to outside it will travel from inside to outside so you will have crack this is where you will see the fracture that this is why we don't cool the ceramic rapidly we have to cool it stepwise. Okay, you have to cool it stepwise. Okay, so what happens? You will have an internal cracks. The cracks will start moving towards outside, and you will have a fracture. Okay, with this, the properties and other things is all over. Okay, very, very important segment of ceramic is right now, which is called the methods of strengthening ceramics. Uh, the, this year, 2020 February uh, exam, the essay was method of strengthening ceramics. Okay, so it, it, it has come as an essay question in our own university. So please listen. So what is this? Whenever I have talked to you about the properties of ceramics and other things, we are talking it, it is uh, very good in biocompatible, it is very good in aesthetics. So what is the disadvantage? The disadvantage of a ceramic is it, it is brittle in nature. Okay, general ceramic is brittle in nature. So you need, so what did the researchers talk about? They thought we need to strengthen the ceramic because when you give a ceramic crown, or a ceramic bridge inside the patient's mouth, the patient is going to eat all types of foods. When I say all types of food, the food range from soft, medium, and a hard food. Okay, so there are three types of foods. So you can buy it on a cake, which is a soft food. You'll buy it on a uh, maybe a little medium cooked food and a hard, like a uh, hard bone or something. So the ceramic has to withstand the force given when he bites on that particular foot for this you need to strengthen the ceramics okay so this is what we were using so how did we are using we can do it under two two types the first one is development of residual compressive stress okay please understand what is this means? Okay, what does this means is you develop the residual compressive stress. How do you develop? You have an object, 
okay if i hit on this object this object breaks so i hit at 10 pounds of force it breaks i need to improve this object okay so i work on do i do something on it so that when i give 10 pounds of force it does not break it so the force has to increase us so this is what is called residual compressive stress please divide it residual is nothing but the remaining compressive is the force acting towards the center and stress is nothing but force per unit area okay so the first method of doing it would be to develop the residual compressive stress so how do you do it you can either minimize the firing circle okay you can reduce the firing circle you can do an iron exchange which is very important iron exchange and then you have thermal tempering okay and then you have what is called the thermal compactability okay you have what is called the thermal compactability so these are the four methods there are four methods number one reducing the firing circle iron exchange temple thermal tempering and thermal compactability okay so i'll be talking about you in depth about each type the second way of reduce uh, strengthening of ceramic is interruption of crack propagation okay you have a crack you interrupt that is you interfere with the crack propagation so that the crack that does not proceed and uh, though thereby there is no fracture of the ceramic so interruption of crack propagation is other type under which you have two types one is the dispensing of crystalline and now another one is called transformation toughening transformation toughening is a very important short notes okay i repeat methods of strengthening ceramics can be done in two methods one is development of residual compressive stress the second way is do is interruption of crack propagation okay so under the residual compressive stress you have four ways to minimize the number of firing circle iron exchange thermal tempering and thermal compactability under the interruption of crack propagation you have two types dispersion of crystalline and transformation toughening shall i proceed So now comes here. Uh, so method of minimizing stress under the residual compressive stress. I said you have minimizing the stress. Uh, so let's build uh, that. So number of firing circles cycles. Okay. So in case the what happened when you do uh, firing of ceramic, what generally happens? You all know from a feldspathic porcelain, it gets converted into a lucidic content of the ceramic. So when you keep on firing, what happens? Multiple fire can alter the thermal contraction of coefficient of uh, the coefficient thermal expansion of porcelain decreases. So you cannot do number of cycling. The more less is the firing cycle of a ceramic. It's a more productivity, a low, uh, more longevity of a ceramic. Okay. So what happens? I told you when you fire a ceramic, it uh, changes from feldspathic porcelain to a lucitic porcelain. Okay, so it changes from feldspathic to lucitic. So when you do a number of firing, lucitic porcelain comes. When lucitic porcelain comes, what happens? The coefficient of thermal expansion decreases. Thereby, you will have fracture. So you need to know the number of cycles you are doing in ceramic. 
This is very important. It's a short notes also. It's called the ion exchange. Okay. This is the most effective method of introducing the residual compressive stress. Okay. This is the most sophisticated or the most effective method, easy method to do it. Sometimes it is called the chemical tempering also. Okay. So what happens? Uh, you need you need to know about two ions. One is the potassium ion. One is the sodium ion. So what does it do? We have a potassium rich sari. Sari means nothing but a mixture of potassium ions. Okay, it's a liquid. It is being poured over the ceramic surface and it is heated up to about 450 degrees for half an hour or 30 minutes. Okay, so what happens? The potassium ions exchanged to that of the sodium ion. I'll show you this picture. So what happened is, what, whatever you see here, the bigger is supposed to be potassium. The whatever you see smaller is called, sorry. Whatever you see smaller is called the sodium, okay? Whatever you see the bigger one is called the potassium ions. Whatever smaller you, the bigger, the bigger one what you see is called the potassium. The smaller one what you see is the sodium. So what happens is, see here, see here, the potassium ions are 35 percentage larger than the sodium ions. So what happens when you, uh, when they send exchange, they send exchange of potassium and sodium okay they uh, from sodium from here it exchange okay so what happens potassium ions is bigger in size and sodium ions is smaller in size so it comes it pushes the sodium ions and the potassium ions comes in okay so this is where is uh, what happens when this happens uh, the particle size become closely packed Okay, and creates a very large residual stress. I'll show you this one minute. So what happens here is when the uh, when the potassium enters into the sodium since the potassium ions is larger it replaces the sodium ions and the residual is becomes this so the, what happens the compressive strength zone wherever it zone it becomes larger the next way of doing is called the thermal tempering creates the residual compressive stress to a rapid cooling okay a surface of the north bridge why it's still hot and it's softened on the outside surface so what we do is thermal tempering certain ceramics okay uh, very uh, where you need a outer layer to be very hard okay so the common example what we uh, say for this is your um, the outer uh, thing if you see your closets okay so the outer the outer area is hard so what they do they heat it and they quench it in the water so what happens the outer surface becomes very hard okay so rapid cooling can bring hardness on the outer surface of the ceramic so this is how it happens okay so what happens is when you uh, when you heat it when you heat it and when you heat it and quench it, you have more compression from outside and less tensile strength from inside. So when there's more compressive force from outside, it becomes very hard. So this is how we do a thermal tempering. Okay. We have another thing called the dispersion centering or the thermal compactibility. Please note it. The method of strengthening glass or ceramic is reinforced by a dispersed phase. Okay. 
of a different material that is capable of hindering or stopping the crack is called the dispersion strengthening see the name itself says don't get confused the name itself says dispersion strengthening that means some material get in a dispersed phase thereby increasing its strength this is what is called dispersion strengthening i give you time please write it down dispersion strengthening is defined as a method of strengthening ceramics by reinforcing them with a dispersed phase of a different material that is capable of preventing the crack is called dispersion strengthening again repeat dispersion strengthening is defined as a method of strengthening where you disperse a particular material so that it stops it hinders it puts a stand still to that of the crack propagation okay so what is that in ceramics which is nothing but alumina aluminum oxide alumina alumina is a material where it can be mixed and dispersed in a dispersion phase which is you have to mix it in a liquid form put it over the ceramic so what happens the alumina particle strengthens and does not allow the crack to propagate or crack to extend this is a technique which is used in porcelain fuse to porcelain jacket crowns so what are the other materials you have alumina lucite like tetra silicate fluoro alumina alumina lithic disilicate magnesium aluminum spindle these are the various uh, what you see here is the company uh, this side is the all the name you have in ceramic spindle these are the uh, availability uh, the ceramic which are available okay so you cannot go and ask them given alumina alumina porcelain you need to ask porcelain i need a porcelain all ceramic or i want the insira alumina so they'll give you this material okay so likewise if you go and ask them i want uh, ips empress 2 is nothing but lithium disilicate this is what they'll give you so you need to know what is the uh, what is available in uh, market so these are the market names okay dicor dicor mcg okay then you have ips empress 2 Okay. So, what are the disadvantage? Definitely, these all are expensive for both via the material as well as the manufacturing equipments and other things. All you need an experienced materials and other thing. High laboratory fees. Okay, they are not strong enough for bridge. As I told you, FPD. FPD is nothing but fixed partial denture where you have four. Or five teeth connected, so these cannot be used for them. You can only use them for a single crown or two teeth bridge and other things. It, it these technique is highly sensitive. You need to be experienced to work on it. So as I told you, anyway, don't be worried about techniques. If they as you practice it, it's going to be common and easier. And uh, you have failure rates because the fracture uh, strength is not as good as other ceramics so you may have a fracture rate okay this is another short notes this is what is called the transformation toughening okay and this is transformation toughening this is seen in zirconium crystals this is seen in the zirconium crystals so what is this transformation please listen and then start writing transformation toughening is nothing but i change from one transformation one structure to another structure but i don't alter the 
primed structure okay so what uh, i just do a little transformation so that it becomes more stable so here it goes undergoing transformation toughening that involves transformation of zeigonium oxide from a metastable tetrahedral crystal, uh, crystalline structure to a stable monoclinic so what you see here there's no much difference between these two pictures okay understand you have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 the same eight you have here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 you have the same atoms but what you see here you can see a slight bending of zeigonium oxide if i do something from here it becomes stable it becomes more stable it becomes a monoclinic it becomes like a single molecule so once i do a transformation toughening like this it becomes more harder the strength increases okay so face at the tip of the cack that the region of the tensile stress okay volume increases so monoclinic it increases this transformation can be prevented with okay so when i do a transformation uh, transformation toughening from here to here yeah this molecule becomes more stable and become more strong when a stress develops and a crack in an area begins to propagate the tetrahedral crystals next to the crack tip may transform to a monoclinical a monoclinic state form okay don't worry about it this side of uh, like this tetrahedral when i do a transformation toughening it becomes like this so once it becomes all the molecules one molecule be like this second molecule third molecule fourth molecule all becomes in a equal shape geometrical shape so there is no crack you cannot get the crack to pass through okay i repeat from from this transformation to this you make it regular monoclinic then there is no there is no possible for it to for the crack to propagate Okay, I'm not going into this. It's not for you guys. Okay, coming into the minimizing the effect of stress razor. What do you mean by call stress razor? Whatever raises or increases the force per unit area is called the stress. raises okay you need to minimize this this is the second type or the second classification where you strengthen the ceramics okay so uh how do you reduce the stress raises okay so uh, stress raises are in ceramic okay you can increase the thickness you can increase the thickness of the ceramic i think i'll stop with this and because too much of one day will be eating so let's go, uh, revise our class do you guys are okay let's revise only this method of strengthening ceramics okay we are doing only the first part we are not doing the second part second part i'll take in the next class we do the first part development of residual compressive stress okay uh it's done by minimizing the firing cycle i said ion exchange thermal tempering and thermal compactibility minimizing the number of firing cycles i told you when you heat up a ceramic a feldspathic ceramic changes into a leucitic ceramic so you try to minimize the firing cycle so you have more of a minimum of leucitic because when you have more of leucitic ceramic your coefficient of thermal expansion is going to come down so you're going to have a brittle ceramic so you don't do that the most effective the most easy method of doing is called the ion exchange so generally when you have ceramic you have sodium ions in it so what we do is we are going to remove the sodium ions and put the potassium ions into it so what is the advantage here 
the potassium ions are bigger in size they are bigger in size the sodium ion are smaller in size so when the potassium ion gets exchanged to that of the so uh, potassium ion get ex uh, exchanged to that of a sodium ions it becomes more densely packed because potassium is 35% more than that of the sodium okay and then you have what is called the thermal tempering thermal tempering is the procedure where the outer surface okay the outer surface is made harder so how do you do you heat up the ceramic and immediately cool down or put it in water or quench it in water the outer surface becomes hard so these are the method of strengthening ceramic under the method of ceramic uh, strengthening ceramic these come under the first way which is called the development of residual compressive stress okay so what i do is i i stop with this for today's class you guys have any doubt you can post them on the whatsapp group i'll try to explain you you have uh, anything any doubts doctor yeah. uh i took heavy now what happened now i finish what to happy again today and stop it uh, uh, ella okay something now uh, maybe okay i only take a here knee then you can unmute them so i'll start i'll go here and say stop stop sharing for one second you go right. 